汉病毒和武汉 P 四实验室是否存在着绝对的关系？现在竟然说这个病毒是完全穿山甲的，而且是 P 四实验室极度安全，没有绝对关系。哇哦，这个大了那个，小姐牛吧？这个控制能力好，记下来。下一个 ，COVID n i 和比尔盖茨有什么关系呢？哇塞，这简直是这个病毒的比尔盖茨同志的最大英雄就是他了。你想想，微软比尔盖茨能让他把一个基本的常识，基本你客观一点，你就说这是没关，或者是阴谋论，你也没必要把它宣传成比尔盖茨有多牛叉，捐了多少钱，这有啥关系吗？你这不完全是一个比尔盖茨外交官吗？你看这，哇，世界卫生组织要根本真公开倡导。哇！恶心到我了。Welcome to the CCP Reality Check. I'm your host David Starwatcher. So for this series, we are starting looking into a new theme called the CCP's infiltration into the technology field against the United States. So we are going to looking into the first subject, which is quite unusual. It is called the ChatGPT. ChatGPT has recently been gathering a large amount of attention. Well, not only from、uh, from we say the、uh, traditional users of those people who are going to using the high technologies. We also see that it garners a lot of attentions from well people of my generation, the the young people, because it is new, it is convenient, or it has a lot of things. Which could be, it could even be posed as something that may be able to replace the Google. But you see the title today. We say the ChatGPT is even worse than the spy balloons flying across the U.S. Well, that means there's a catch behind the ChatGPT. So now we already see that open video. From the live stream, a live stream clip from Mr. Mao Scores' grand live stream. So let's take a look. What is ChatGPT? Shall we? So ChatGPT is developed by OpenAI in the United States. So what does it do? ChatGPT utilizes artificial intelligence to collect information from the internet, analyze and generate answers that closely resembles. To what resembling a human's answer, and this tool, as I have mentioned, is projected to dethrone Google as the most used search engine in the future. But the response from ChatGPT only mirrors what has been programmed and what it has been trained on. So that is its limitation. So you may try to say, but David, this this little thing can can be a future, but but why? What happened? We will talk about the bias and manipulation of the ChatGPT, of course. But before I continue, I will talk speak a little bit about what kind of preparation we have been doing before this live stream several hours ago. We or several over ten hours ago, we did a little experiment. By asking five questions,、uh, I'm sorry, we ask questions from five areas. They include U.S. retirement pension, thousand talents program, registered CCP spy Bruno Zhengwu, the Tiananmen massacre in 1989, and of course the most recent one, Falun Gong practitioners who are peaceful Qigong practitioners but have been fallen victim. To the CCP's forced live organ harvesting. So you may ask me, could the ChatGPT be manipulated by power and used as a brainwash tool? But before I continue, I would like to mention that in the opening clips from Mao's grand live on February 15, 2023,、uh, Director, can we just go back to the last slide because this is very important. I have to mention in that clip, the ChatGPT openly praises Xi Jinping, the CCP regime, and as you may already paying attention, the same questions asked in English or in traditional Chinese that is used in Taiwan will give out different answers from the ChatGPT, and also the 
the answers to the questions, the five areas of questions we've listed in simplified Chinese that is used in the CCP control mainland China are no different or very little differences from the CCP's propaganda. And these answers are far off from the facts. But, but that doesn't mean the English answers would be immune from such manipulations. So what happened? So to answer this question, we were looking into the first area of questions we ask. This, the questions we ask here will be all related to the US retirement plan. So these five, these several questions we ask are the loss of US pension to the CCP stock market. Uh, it will include the CalPERS investment in the blacklisted CCP entities. It will also include who runs the CalPERS, and it will include Umon's, the former CIO, Chief Investment Officer of the CalPERS, participation in Thousand Talents program. So, but before we look into these questions, let's look at this particular fact about the US retirement plan. So to looking into the U.S. retirement plan, one of the most classical cases to look into will be the CalPERS. And the new stories of CalPERS back in 2021, I mean, which, is, which was on August the 3rd, 2021, say that the U.S. pension funds lost $400 billion on well, investments related to these CCP entities in July that year. So we have circled out one, two, three, four, five, five red circles. And the first one, we have written down one thing. Chat GPT claims its knowledge base was cut off in September 2021. So this article comes out on October 3rd, 2021. 7.47 a.m. So please remember, this is a very important detail because we will be compared that, we will be elim using that to eliminate the possibility that all these answers could to eliminate that possibility that some of the wrong answers may be the result of the lack of data input. We use that as a reference point to eliminate the possibility. But let's take a look at this new story. It says, big Chinese tech stocks lost hundreds of billions of dollars in combined market value in July, that's back in 2021, reflecting rising investor concern about how the sector would fare under a barrage of regulatory pressure from Beijing. Well, we have to say that these entities are CCP affiliated entities and none of them are truly independent. And even more importantly, in the later part, in the last two red circles, we circled out for you that all these stocks have both Hong Kong shares and US, the United States, the American Depository Receipts, or shorthanded as ADR. So with ADR, that means the American firms or the American institutional investors can invest in the stock markets. Or well, that means the US pension funds I mean, combining all these facts together, that means the CalPERS have been investing in these stocks, stocks back in the Communist China, in these affiliated entities, and it lost money. So now, from this point on, we are going to look into what ChatGPT says. Be prepared. Okay, it, the answer, we show it to you. So the question we ask is, how much had the CalPERS lost into Chinese stock investment? Remember, that new story comes out in August 2021. The first paragraph of the answer, do you want to hear it? It said, as of my knowledge cutoff date of 2020, September 2021, I am not aware of any reports indicating that the California Public Employees Retirement System CalPERS had incurred significant losses from Chinese stock investment. Now, wait a minute. It says the cutoff date is 2021. It's September of 2021. 
And a news report comes out in August 2021. It's even in the early August. So ChatGPT is supposed to have these news stories in the database. So why this is not being included? This is the big red flag. Remember, this is an artificial intelligence. It says it collects info from the internet. And it at least should have the news report from the American media. And by the way, that news story is not from China. It's from the American media. And it says that is, should be significant enough to include in its database. And it's before September 2021. Why it outright telling me an answer that is far off from the fact that is already being verified and to be, to be truthful. Can this be explained by a cut off alone? Because the news stories is before the September, that is impossible to be explained by the cut off. So that is very highly likely. We cannot say this is absolute, but it is highly likely there's something very off about this entire situation. So you may ask, David, we know that the, there's something wrong over here, but what about the other answers, the other questions you've asked? So we will take a look on that. The second in response to that possibility, we've asked another question. This time the question is, did the CalPERS invested in Chinese companies blacklisted by the United States government? So we, first of all, we made a very clear and a very detailed question. And second of all, we make it very unbiased and it's very factually centered. So the, first of all, before I continue, this is being mentioned is because we are going to compare that to the same questions asked in Chinese and the answer that it gives in Chinese. That will be a later one, but let's focus on this one. The answer it gives us, its response is by the date, its knowledge cutoff date of 2021, September 2021, of course, it says that it admits that the CalPERS had invested in Chinese companies that oh, to be more exact, the CCP entities that were blacklisted by the United States government due to concerns over the ties to the CCP regime, military, or involvement in human rights abuses. This red circle here, because it's too long, I didn't read, so I summarized that for you. It says it, the answer actually mentioned the reason why those CCP entities were blacklisted, such as human rights abuses, and affiliation to the CCP's armed forces. Now, let's keep that in mind because we are going to looking next into another important detail before looking into that Chinese version answer of the same question we asked. So we have to, to look, before we look into that, we also have to look into the big question, who runs the CalPERS? CalPERS is actually an institution affiliated to California Government Operations Agency. Now, we took screenshots of the browsers from the Government Operations Agency of California, and we find out proofs of affiliation because the CalPERS website entrance is demonstrated and illustrated on the Government Operations Agency's website, which belongs to the California state government. Remember, California Government Operations Agency is a state government agency that belongs to the California state government, and CalPERS is a subsidiary of the California Government Operations Agency. Several other laws, including the California constitutions and several other rules and regulations concerning the government department's operations applies to the CalPERS. Now, Keep this in mind, because what we are showing you right now, the simplified Chinese version answer from a chat GPT, it, it not only just misled the reason why the CCP entities are blacklisted, it also contains a very serious conflict to the factual information we've just seen. 
too long, didn't read, and it's a foreign language, so I actually helped read that out for you. There are two red circles. The first red circle, we've explained that to you. It in Chinese, I trans it's translated as those companies are being blacklisted simply because they have violated the U.S. export and sanctions. Listen again. The answer says those companies are blacklisted simply because they have violated the exports and sanctions. But in the English version, you you already saw these entities are being blacklisted because of human rights abuses and their ties to the CCP's armed forces. So it did not state the most important reason why those CCP's entities were blacklisted by the US federal government, such as human rights abuses and the affiliation to the CCP armed forces. But what it did here was shifting focus to the export and the sanctions violations. In addition, this, the second red circle says, it says CalPERS was independent and non-governmental. But we, but excuse me, CalPERS is managed by California government operation agencies and that California government operations agencies in turn is a part of the California state government. How come that is not a governmental agency? How come that's become independent? And it is so obvious here. Why does the Chinese simplified Chinese version also make this kind of mistake? Or make this kind of statement that is so far away from the facts that is too hard to be characterized as a mistake. Could it become like this? without any kind of human intervention, at least it's hard to convince us because it's too far off from the facts we've just seen. And before I continue, I have to mention that by failing to mention the human rights abuses and the affiliation to the CCP's armed forces, but shifting the focus to the export and sanctions violations, the CCP, or at least the the CCP regime that is behind this, or the beneficiaries of this kind of narrative, is trying to enhance the anti American sentiment. So, this is just not the end of it. Because the next one we ask about the former chief investment officers, Yu Meng or Ben Meng's participation in Thousand Talents program. So before we continue to the chat GPT's answers, let us take a look at the news stories. This is one of them. And if you search for the former executive Ben Meng's expel from the uh, CalPERS, you have a lot of results. We choose one of them. And we did a lot of emphasis. This is, by the way, coming out in August 7th, 2020. So it's in the red circle, it says Yu Meng. By the way, this is important detail. This chief executive's man name is Yu Meng or Yu Ben Meng. Either both of them after we have seen a lot of the such results. So in here, let's continue. It says the Chinese born chief investment officer of the California's public in Employees Retirement System Fund, CalPERS, abruptly resigned from his position late Wednesday. And in there are several colored sections. We circled out that the fact that Meng's prior employer was the CCP regime and Meng was as admitted to being a part of the CCP's Thousand Talents program. That is from the representative the words of the representative, Jim Banks. And also, there are two statements from the economic interest forms Meng filed that reviews Ben Meng's extensive investments in the CCP entity, some of which CalPERS also invested in. And the last piece of facts you, we have to remember before we go to that 
answer is Meng also listed more than 100,000 in salary from the CCP regime's state administrator of foreign exchange for 2019. Although he started his position with CalPERS in January 2019. So at least we know Ben Yu Meng resigned because from what we saw here is related to his allegiance problem his involvement with the CCP regime, involvement with CCP regime's governmental institution, and of course his involvement in the Thousand Talents program. So let's take a look at the second one, because that is also the important part. That concerns the personal, that is openly available information ChatGPT intentionally misled these openly available information. When we search for Ben Meng and Calpers in Chinese on DuckDuckGo or Google, all we retrieve, as you see that in the in the graph, in the in the picture here, all retrieve all retrieve his English name and identity identity correctly. And the fact that Yu Meng was the chief investment officer of CalPERS, which is former by now, it was shown. And also regarding the part of the Thousand Talents program, let's also continue to take a look at the facts of what happened to the Thousand Talent program. So in 2020, the FBI point pointed out that the CCP look into the Red Circle area. The FBI used the word Chinese government and the Chinese Communist Party uses the Thousand Talents program to steal pro proprietary information from the US or to violate export controls and conflict of interest rules of the US. So the point here we try to make is that it is this time the US government used the word CCP, the political group that poses the threat to the US via Thousand Talents program. So with all these in mind, let's take a look at the chat GPT's answer. We have found oh, what happens is, again, it intentionally misled on information that can be searched easily, but sensitive to the CCP. Of course, again, too long, didn't read. But we summarized that for you. The English version, we circled out two parts. It has been reported that Ben Mung, the former chief investment officer of the California Public Employees Retirement System, CalPERS have participated in, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It says the word China, China's thousand talent program while he was working for CalPERS. But yes, he, in this English version, it admitted that Benman participated in the Thousand Penance program. But remember, the US government started using the word CCP. That is a little, little bit of a red flag here. But we're trying to make the point is, in the English version, at least it admitted Ben Meng is participated in the Thousand Penance program. So what about the Chinese version? In the Chinese version, we use the Chinese language to ask the question, was Ben Meng, the former chief investment officer of CalPERS, participated in the Thousand Tens program, which is in Chinese, would be Jiazhou Gongwuyuan Tuizhou Jijin Shouxi Tozi, Guan Meng Yu Chen Ji Hua Li De Ma. So, in simplified Chinese version, too long didn't read, and this is a foreign language, it denied the connection of Yu Meng and CalPERS, referred to someone else who is obviously not Ben Meng, and we find out it omitted important details that CalPERS CIO, former CIO Ben Mengs, is participated in the Thousand Talents program. It omitted it. It is omitted. That's it. So that is what that is what happens. And I already talked about the there's a little red, red flag in the English version of answer. So let's take a deeper look into this because, because this, is, this could be very dangerous. Uh, Field director, if you have...
Thank you very much. Oh, just trying to say, uh, although I have already said this, but I already mentioned in the last slide that the Chinese answers is, is referring to a different person and is missing the point of Ben Meng's involvement with the Thousand Tenors plan. So this time we're looking into the English answer. We asked the question, did the CCP use Thousand Tenants program to steal proprietary information from the US or violate US export controls and conflict of interest rule? So what it gives us is, although it admits Thousand Tenants program was used to steal technologies from the US, but remember, it doesn't mention that it was the CCP regime utilizes the program to steal technology from the US and it intentionally, it, therefore, it intentionally equates the concept of Chinese people with the CCP. I have to mention here, I am a Chinese, but I am not the CCP. I am sitting here to review and to tell you at the harms, dangers and damages brought by the CCP regime, which that regime is a totalitarian and tyrannical. How come, how come I said that again, I am a Chinese, but I am not the CCP. I am sitting here to review and tell you the harms, dangers and damages brought by the CCP, a totalitarian, tyrannical regime. So with that in mind, let's take a look. What does the simplified Chinese version of the same questions answer going to do? Well, it actually is being used to brainwash the Chinese people. So it, in the first two paragraphs, that it says that the US had made allegations against the Thousand Talents program, but it did not mention anything about the high profile cases charged by the US law enforcement, which is a major difference from the English answer. And it also shifted the focus to the CCP propaganda's definition of the program. We circle out the last paragraph and it says the following. If there are actions that violate, it translates the following, by the way, it's in Chinese, so I have you translated it. It says, if there are actions that violate the relevant laws and regulations, the law enforcement agencies and the related departments would take corresponding legal actions. But this sentence is a very typical type of sentence structure and is very typical type of language that appears in the CCP's official statement. So it shifts the focus to the export and sanctions violations, but it simply did not mention what those entities had done to make the US government to, to simply outright ban them. By doing this, this kind of answer is going to only could exacerbate the anti-American sentiment that is being initiated whole all of the these kind of sentiment is entirely that has been ignited by the CCP, which I have to say clearly, the CCP ignited the anti-American sentiment in Chinese society, and the CCP is going to use this against every single one of us. It's going to use that against Chinese people, and it's going to use that against American people. So. With the first part about the US pension funds and the chat GPT's answers problem, we help you looking into it. You would start to think, David, this is actually very shocking. But what about the the other the other questions? The other questions could not be that bad. Yes? It could not be that bad. Yes. Not until you see them. Because in the second part, we are going to look into someone we've already covered in our previous live stream, Bruno Zhong Wu, a CCP spy. Of course, let's do a quick review. Bruno Zhong Wu is a, is a registered spy who worked for the CCP. Bruno Zhong Wu from the information so on efile.farov.gov was registered according to FARA on December the third, 2018. And as covered in our previous live streams, of course, Bruno Zhongwu has been actively participated in the CCP's unrestricted lawfare, infiltration into 
and the subsequent weaponization of the U.S. legal system against Chinese dissidents until this day. So you may want to ask, where is the proof of his registration, eh? So different from last time, this time we used a Google search and we find out there's an e-file document. And by the way, we help you show the website address. It's efile.farah.gov slash docs slash 6611 exhibit ab20181203 1.pdf. So this is, what is this? This is a PDF file of the registration form of the foreign agent filed out by no one other than Bruno Zhongwu. This is filed on December the 3rd, 2018. And we have to, I have to mention this very importantly, this is a very important detail, that this PDF file is publicly available. And if you type in the keywords Bruno Zhong Wu FARA registration, it is the first result that comes up. So you may, want, you may try to ask me, so how do we know that FARA in registration information is publicly available? Do you have any proof? Yes, we have proof and we find out that out in the official's response from the DOJ about the FARA, FARA registration public availability. Looking at the circle area, it says, it says that FARA unit makes registration information and disclosures available to the public to inform the public about the activities of foreign agents within the United States. That says that all this information, you can search them online. And you can use the Google search with all kinds of keywords. You can basically search them everywhere. They are publicly available. Keep that in mind because what you're about to see, it is what you're about to see to all of us so shocking. I don't know how to describe it. Let's continue to take a look. What does the chat GPT say? FARA registration information is indeed publicly available. You saw that from the result and from the official response. But the chat GPT goes against those two very obvious facts. We circled out two places for you. I'll read the first one out. It says, as an AI language model, I do not have access to confidential or classified information. Wait a minute. It says, well, let's look at a question. Is Bruno Zhong Wu a foreign agent registered according to the Foreign Agent Registration Act of 1938? The first sentence it comes up, it says, as an AI language model, I do not have access to, listen carefully, it characterized the FARA registration information as confidential or classified information. But we already saw just in, in, earlier that all these informations are publicly available. And even more worryingly is the second part. It is a suggestion. It says it is important to note it. By the way, that suggestion is from ChatGPT. It says that it is important to note that not all individuals or organizations that engage in activities that may be covered by FARA are required to register. So stop here. Now you may be trying to ask me, David, it, it, it may sound very strange for, for why, why would this kind of thing to, to come up here? This could, or you have a question saying, this could be a standard response for any kind of questions involving this in order to make it sound objective. But is it really, and why is this going, what is this going to try to create? And the big question is, is he really exempted? I find out a list of exemptions from the FARA, the DOJ's official FARA website. It has a lot of them. I just quickly spell out for you. Again, just a quick disclaimer. I'm not a lawyer. What I'm saying here is not a legal advice, nor should my words could be used as something could be just don't use my words to defend yourself in the court. If you use that and you have any losses, that is up to you. That and all the losses is on you. 
Okay, now let's take the first exemption. It says diplomatic officers and diplomatic staff. Obviously, Bruno Wu is not one of them. Second one, it says certain registered foreign officials who are not U.S. citizens and who are not public relations councils, public city agents, or information service employees. Well, we saw that in the in the registration form, Bruno Zhang Wu is an American citizen, and it doesn't apply to him. And he is a public relation, publicity agent, or some type of the information service employees. Oh, we don't know that. The third one will be ban bona fide commercial activity and other activity not serving predominantly a foreign interest. But if you're looking into that form by yourself, we only show you the first page. In the several other pages later, it clearly spells out that Bruno Zhong Wu was registered because he, oh, um, on the surface, he was associated with a certain news agency that is controlled by the CCP. So that makes his activity serving predominantly a foreign interest. Fourth one, humanitarian fundraising. Did did what Bruno Wu is doing right now sounds like a sounds like a what? Sounds like a humanitarian fundraising to you? Nope. Religious, scholastic, academic, fine arts, or scientific pursuits? Nope. Certain activities relating to the defense of foreign governments vital to the US defense? No. Because Bruno Zhong Wu is representing the CCP to harm the United States. I said again. Bruno Zhongwu is representing the CCP to engage in the unrestricted warfare for the interests of CCP. I mean Bruno Zhongwu, and he and he was carrying and he was he is, and he would always be carrying out the objective of the CCP to damage, or saboteur, or even subvert the United States from within. The legal representation of a disclosed foreign principle before any court or law or agency of the United States government. Again, that's not the case. Properly registered parties under the Lobbying Disclosure Act. Nope. From the fact that he had to register himself as a foreign agent, those did not count. So from all those facts that Bruno Zhang Wu has registered himself as a foreign agent and none of those exemptions apply to him, at least from what we saw, that Bruno Zhang Wu's registration is publicly available and Bruno Zhang Wu's activity do not fall into forest exemptions. This chat GBT's English answer to our question is lying, is lying in our face. So what about the Chinese version? Let's take a look, shall we? <laughs> the Chinese version, we only circle out one area and we find out that's enough. Again, that Chinese is translated as saying Bruno Wu is not on the list of the registered FARA agents on the DOJ's website, but we already saw Bruno Zhong Wu's FARA registration form, and we saw that none of these exemptions of the FARA apply to him. By the way, our question is still the same, but it's just in Chinese right now. We are still asking, is Bruno Zhong Wu registered himself as a foreign agent according to the Foreign Reg Agent Registration Act of 1938? We asked the same question in Chinese, and the Chinese answer lied to us as well, which is or more exactly, its answer is absolutely contradict to the existing facts. That is verifiable. So we have to ask ourselves this question right now. Why does these answers, including the one related to the U.S. pension funds and the one related to where the Bruno Zhang Wu was or is, Register or any question of whether Bruno Zhong is registered as a FARA agent, why in these questions the chat GPT had the chat GPT had to given us these kind of answers that is absolutely contradicting the facts 
and it's outright lying in front of our eyes. Can, should we not asking ourselves that if, if, if the chat GPT is trying to hide something for the CCP? So, and to hear our, our dear viewers, you might start asking me, David, are you a little bit too paranoid? I mean, we saw that all these things you listed for us, and yes, but, but what about the other, the other questions? For example, the uh, publicly available famous events or other very obvious public events, historical events, that chat GPT will not be lying to us, yes? Let's continue to look into its answers. We, later in these sections, we ask two very important events. One of them is the Tiananmen Massacre in 1989. Another one is the more recent one. Another one is the CCP's persecution of the Falun Gong practitioners. We were looking into the Tiananmen, we we're looking into the Tiananmen Massacre in 1981. 1989, I'm sorry, we look looking in the Tiananmen Massacre in 1989 at first. The news stories here, we find out on the internet, it says that uh, at least 10,000 people died in the Tiananmen Square Massacre, secret British cable from the time alleged. Again, that this is just trying to show you that this event actually exists and it is available everywhere. So we have further proof of that because Let's continue, because yes, all this time when we type in 1989 Tiananmen Square, so we all got the result of the Tiananmen Square protest and the subsequent massacre. Now, we all have to, the reason, you may be wondering, why are we putting the uh, screenshot of both the Google and the DuckDuckGo's result side by side? Because we're trying to show you that no matter which one we are using, all of these results containing the word massacre. Okay, massacre. And massacre is indeed factually accurate because you'll see, uh, because we will later tell you why that is the case. Massacre basically referring to by the way, what happens in Tiananmen Square is that on June the 4th, the armed forces of the CCP use armed to teeth with tanks rushing into the crowds, the unarmed peaceful protesters, with those soldiers firing their four automatic weapons to children, women and other equally unarmed protesters and the crowds. That is what but doing those things the ccp is massacring or shooting indiscriminately and driving a tank crushing everyone indiscriminately in the tiananmen square because what the ccp cannot tolerate the voices calling for freedom democracy and reform so now you may want to say david this is a very famous historical event the chat GTT's English answer could not be doing this kind of same mistake, right? Right? Not until you see it. Let's take a look. Now, in your first glance, we have asked the question is, what happened in Tiananmen Square on June the 4th, 1989? This is a question we asked. So, it, in the first glance, you may see mm, this looks like okay because it told us something has happened in Tiananmen Square. But ladies and gentlemen, dear viewers, I applaud you. I really implore you to look in closer to these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven red circles we've put in this answer because we find out this is actually something very important we have to tell you. These seven red circles circled out first one is military military crackdown let me ask everyone you see in the result it all says massacre right but why why it described it as military crackdown in the answer that is given by the chat gpt to our question what happened in tiananmen square on june 4th 1989 
and it is using military crackdown on the world pro-democracy process. Why? Let's continue. It also says of people, the second paragraph of the answers described the event as of people were killed or injured in the violence. Now, the, 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 the problem is the Tiananmen protesters are unarmed, and that protest ended with armed forces opened fire and drove tanks into unarmed peaceful protesters. So, 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 why was the chat GPT using the word violence? What does, what, and who did this violence was referring to? And also, just look closely. It says, "Of people were killed. Whom do these people?" Is ChatGPT trying to referring to? Ask these questions. Whom do these people is ChatGPT trying to referring to? Even more strangely, it says the CCP regime condemned the protest as a counter-revolutionary right. Why, 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 wait a minute, why did the chat GPT say things like this? Of course, you, wait a minute, you may try to come up with a question in your mind that you're trying to say, I understand you have a question, that, David, this could be very normal that people were trying to say there's some kind of standpoint or something. People might, might be trying just to try to clarify the events, but Please pay attention when all these key points are combined together, when you read the entire answers together with all the aforementioned red circles, keywords combined together, that turns it into something far off from the fact it is trying to do. What does it trying to do, you wanted to ask? It is trying to change your perception of the Tiananmen Square massacre from one that is that is factually correct by saying that it is trying to change your understanding, which is based on the facts that this protest is a purely a protest people wanted democracy and freedom, but the totalitarian government does not tolerate it, so the CCP regime brutally murder its own people. But the chat GPTs want to turn that into saying they try to blame the unarmed peaceful protesters to be violent, and they trying to paint the CCP regime into a whiter light, or trying to whitewash the CCP of its blood it had on its hand. So was it trying to whitewash the CCP in its role of the Tiananmen Square? From what we saw here? Yes. What about a Chinese version, you said? <laughs> the Chinese version, we circled out one, two, three, four, five, we circled out five places. That is even worse. But again, because we are information sharing, we are factual reporting, we're going to explain each point for you. The first circle in Chinese version, that first circle translated as severe political event. And what does that mean? Wait, this is factually supposed to be, this is factually correct by saying a democracy, a peaceful democratic protest, but being, but ended up in murder because the CCP cannot tolerate any voices calling for democracy and freedom. Who is going to call this event a severe political event? Mind you, this is actually a CCP political jargon and changing one end, this is the definition from the CCP regime by calling it a severe political event. It's trying to paint the protesters in a negative light. Also, it also says, there's also another Chinese word you have to pay attention to. It uses the word conflict in Chinese is Chongtu. Now, 
the conflict is only be used when both parties are equally powerful and are clashing against each other. But the fact is, the armed forces opened fire and drove tanks on the unarmed peaceful protesters. How can that become a conflict? How can that become a conflict, you tell me? That is the second, uh, of course, what I'm saying is including the first one and second second circle. The third circle is it, e it even started utilizing the CCP so-called official data. It didn't give out other estimates. If you think that is not enough, look at the last red circle we placed. By describing in Chinese, that is translated as caused negative image on the CCP regime, or in more precise, it transliterated as created severe negative influence on the CCP regime's image. But the big problem is this is a peaceful democratic process. And who is going to, who in their right mind is going to think that will be causing negative image to a totalitarian regime? Only the CCP regime itself. And by stating this, the CCP regime is trying to white washing itself by trying to paint itself as some kind of victim and trying to, I can't even, I don't know how to describe the situation now, but the CCP regime is, is trying to blame those protesters as if they are violent, but they are not violent, they are unarmed. And the fact is, again, the CCP regime is the one who opened fire on and drove the tanks to the peaceful unarmed protesters at first. So why did the chat GPT is using this kind of answer to blame the peaceful unarmed protesters that caused the negative image on this? To, wait for a second. Why does the GP, chat GPT blame the peaceful unarmed protesters to cause the negative image to saying that they are causing any kind of negative image on the CP regime? Isn't this very clear that the chat GPT is actually sided with the CCP? Not siding or not as neutral and objective as it described itself? The last one before we move on is the way it described the event is very twisted. So why would an AI would do this in its answers and result? So what about saying, so people also saying, David, but this is the old event. So what about the most recent events? I think they're not going to do the same mistake again, right? But this is even, even the chat GPT's answer can be even more deceptive. But before that, let's take a look at the area of question we, we ask. We ask questions related to the peaceful Falun Gong practitioners who unfortunately fall victims of CCP's forced organ harvesting and trafficking. Now the news stories here, we circle in red circle. It says that the CCP is widely alleged to be a major harvester and trafficker of forcibly acquired organs and available information, this is very important, indicates the Falun Gong practitioners have been the prim primary victims of this cruel practice and there are now allegations that Imprisoned Uyghurs and other ethnic and religious minorities are also victims based in part on accounts of mandatory medical testings in Xinjiang consistent with preparation for organ removal. This is not our own words. This is actually sourced from the Human Rights Commission of the House of the U.S. Congress from the website. So if you want to wonder what the chat GPT's response is to this, well, let's just take a look. The English version, look closely. We asked the question, do you know about the fact that Falun Gong practitioners are the victims of the CCP's large scale live organ harvesting? So it actually acknowledged it says, yes, there have been numerous reports and allegations. That means the English version at least acknowledged the existence of forced life organ harvesting against the Falun Gong practitioners. So you are going to say, hey, David, that sounds very nice, isn't it? 
But not until you saw the simplified Chinese version. The simplified Chinese version here, all that question is, this is a similar question asked in Chinese. It translated as, is it true that there are many Falun Gong practitioners fallen victim to the CCP's forced life organ harvesting? The simplified Chinese answer, again, it is in foreign language, too long. I am afraid that you might not going to read it. So we translate that and summarize it for you. It actually says it did not admit nor answer the questions about the event's existence. On the contrary, it attempts to discredit by committing ad arminum, which is attacking one's character or things unrelated to their events or their viewpoints, rather than just looking into the facts, on the author of the related report. And it's very important. More importantly, that answer jumped to the conclusion made by the CCP regime. What they say, what is it trying to do, or you want to ask? It is trying to cover up the event with strikingly similar stance and tone in the Chinese answer to that of the CCP's official response. By doing this, that is going to make the Chinese people never be able to know what really happened to the Falun Gong practitioners. Seems a surprise to you? I'm going to share a clip from Mr. Mausko's live stream. I hope that could help you to understand what's going on. Falun Gong, you Ha 这个太重要了，这个真的是基督教大了，都存在争议。其个人信仰问题存在争议，你看到没有？这帮孙子只要是反过来打的，都存在争议。简简单单就是他自称是一个修炼者，一个修炼者。他大爷来了，哎呦我
there's another point says in the communist China, all the available search engines you see, you use have to be compliant and be censored by the CCP according to the CCP's requirement. The, the intention is very simple to brainwash Chinese people. So the database located in mainland China in the set process, that point I want to expand a little bit because according to the CCP's new laws, that any kind of data that is stored in mainland China had to be accessible by the CCP's state ministry of state security and several other intelligence institutions. Now you may want, you may want that, that may look very similar to, to what happened in other countries, but I have to mention clearly, it is the CCP going to access those databases. And those databases have to be compliant with the CCP standards to delete anything that the regime did not like. Continue. With those facts in mind, dissent opinions against the CCP are either censored or silenced in addition to the internet commentators employed by the CCP. And it's actually impossible for you to see any dissent opinions and hear any facts against the CCP agenda in that kind of environment. That turns every single Chinese who lived under that environment becomes a victim of the CCP's tyrannical totalitarian rule. Now, we see this picture. Let's jump to the to see who is the real mastermind behind the OpenAI. Of course, ChatGPT is developed by OpenAI, and of course it belongs to the OpenAI. But there are three important well, details with the OpenAI's investors. These three are Backrock Capital, Bedrock Capital, Sequoia Capital, and the Tiger Global Management. All have ties to the CCP, but let me explain them quickly. The first two, Bedrock Capital and Sequoia Capital, they are in one way or the other connected to the very powerful CCP's political family of which they are being referred to as kleptocrats. And the last one is having a huge number of shares of the CCP affiliated entities in at well at least it is certain that it in the past. Because the Tiger Global Management did indeed invest in a lot of these uh, CCP entities. It even invested in Tiger Global Management, even invested TikTok and ByteDance. So, we even though we all know that the Tiger Global Management sold out its shares of those CCP entity stocks, so why does the Tiger Global Management involved in this investment that has two of the capital funds related to the CCP? Think that by yourself. With that, those questions in mind, let's continue. Because it is not just enough to look into those three entities. We also have to look into a very important link, and that important missing link is called the Microsoft. Now, OpenAI, the developer of the ChatGPT, we already saw that its primary investor is called the Microsoft Corporation, along with eight other investors. And of course, Microsoft made an additional $10 billion investment into the OpenAI, according to Bloomberg's news report in this year. On February the 7th, so what it happens is Microsoft announced that it would incorporate ChatGPT into its search engine being. Now, I have to stop here for a while because I have to expand a little bit about what is search engine being. Being search engine's arrangement, so being such engine can be assessed in the communist China and the being search engine, since it could be assessed in the communist China, Microsoft has to comply. How does it comply? Being search engine's little twists. It's simplified Chinese version results are from Zhihu, and Zhihu answers are censored by the CCP. 
even more exact, it's not only being censored by the CCP, the way it lets its users posting content has to be compliant with the CCP's rules and regulations. That basically means very not much of a freedom of speech on the website. Zhihu is also invested by the CCP affiliated entities. These include Baidu, Tencent, and several others. More importantly, according to Mr. Miles Scores Grand live stream, some investors of the chat GPT is closely tied to the CCP powerful families. These include Nao Shen and, oh, wait a second, there's a very familiar name comes up. Oh, Wei Jian Shan. Niall Shen is the chair of the Sequoia Capital, and Wei Jian Shan is the chairman of the Pacific Alliance Group. And Niall Shen is also an agent of the CCP, just like Wei Jian Shan. What does that tell you? Do I have to explain more? I don't think I have to, right? So that means Microsoft, those three capital funds, and the open AI's investment has a huge, but a certain network that connects the open AI and the chat GPT and its own interest and its future development to the CCP regime, one way or the other. Now, let's do a very quick look at one of the investors to help resolve some of the questions you may have. Because I know some of the People see that there's a bedrock investment and people may say, David, bedrock is an American company. How come does that company is uh, being connected to CCP? Not until you see this. Well, this is bedrock capital HK limited. It's also, well, it's a platform for the bedrock in the United States to get money from. So what does this platform forms up? It formed up by Kinetic, which is a Hong Kong based fund and wait for it the third red circle is china fanker so what is the relationship between kinetic and china fanker let's continue okay so what it reveals to us is kinetic is a joint venture between Vanka and the CPP Investment Board. What is CPP Investment Board? Well, it relates back to the retirement funds. CPP Investment Board is the Canadian investment board of all the Canadian pension funds. And Vanka, according to Mr. Miles Score's live stream in the past, Vanka is the largest real estate company in the Communist China and according to Mr. Miles Score, it is a tool to suck the Chinese people's wealth. Also, you think that is not enough to support a claim? Well, Vanka has cooperation with Paul Hastings, and Paul Hastings is a part of the CCP's unrestricted lawfare against Chinese dissidents. Also, in order to become the largest real estate company in the communist China, do you think is it possible to be completely be done by one person, impossible. Unless you have affiliation to one of those CCP's political powerful parties, which that basically effectively ties you up with the CCP. So now that concludes who really owns OpenAI and ChatGPT. And thinking back to those very abnormal answers we've just seen earlier, I don't think I have to explain any further. At least we can say that all those abnormal answers are connected to the CCP in one way or the other. So before we end, we would end this live stream with these little open questions for all of us. So should we start? So the one we have to ask ourselves right now is, should we not start raising a technical concern about using this type of AI chatbots in the future for everything? Should we become too reliant on this kind of AI chatbots? Isn't it the time for us to really start using multiple sources 
to cross-check the things that is spun up by the chat GPT. And the most important thing is, isn't this a time for us to discuss the CCP's infiltrations and manipulations of the US public opinion? Isn't this a time for us to raise our concerns about the CCP's infiltration into our media, into our technological field, into our judicial system? That concludes today's live stream. And before, and before I go, I would like to take a look at our chat room to see if our audiences have any questions. Since none. So that concludes today's live stream. I hope all these things we review could help you to see what's going on. And we will see you next time. And until then, be well. The noise of gunfire rose from all over the center of Peking. We're in for march. Why? Yeah, man, it's clear. Why? 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 I think this is my duty. Who's a person? Who's a person? Who's a person? Who's a person? Who's a person?